Mike Papantonio is with us, the attorney and host of the Ring of Fire radio program, ringoffireradio.com. Uh, uh, Pap, great to see you again. Tom, how are you? I am great, but I'll get better. Uh, one of the stories that really got lost in, the, uh, uh, in this whole Boston thing, and we will, if anything changes, we will break in and, and you know, let people know what's going on with that. But right now it's just you know, it's kind of static until 5 o'clock. Um, one of the things that happened was that uh, on the 11th, there was a law passed to let members of Congress trade on inside information, the stuff that Martha Stewart went to jail for mm. lying about right. not even doing. Right. And yeah, you might remember that our president just a year ago signed a bill that said that about 28,000 government uh, employees, very, very high, high management, very top of the food chain, that they had an obligation to disclose any potential conflicts by first of all disclosing uh, who who are they who they're investing with what what is where is their money what right. interest might they have and so it, it just we're seeing a pattern here on that day uh, the president said you know this is a great idea and I'm going to sign it because it's going to stop the deficit of trust that takes place in Washington the the pattern we see with uh, this president is day one before the election, he's talking about what a great idea this is. Day two, in the silence, almost secret of the night, he signs off on this thing. Congress unanimously uh, supports it. And, and, and it's the same thing we saw with Social Security, you understand, or, or any of the benefit kinds of stories, where day one, when he's running for president, there are going to be no cuts to Social Security, none to Medicare. Day two, when he becomes president, all that changes. So this, this is a very distinctive pattern about this president, Tom. It's this not, seems it's, so, so self-destructive. Well, it is. Yeah. It is for I mean, Democrats. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, the, how how is this going to help the Democratic Party in twenty fourteen? I mean, you, you you we have elections coming up, and when when I hear and and you've probably heard it too, Michelle Bachman, you know, who has spent her mm, whole entire right. life trying to privatize right. Social Security, come out and say, "I am opposed to the president's cuts to Social Security." <laughs> smart. Yeah. Very smart. <sighs> Well, you know She's what? Win re-election. Yeah, the problem, the problem, Tom, is that what we're seeing is reflection of a plutocracy, and we're we're so naive. You know, we want to hold on to this this image of this uh, this well-oiled working democracy, but it's a plutocracy, and this president has been influenced by it. Uh, don't forget, Tom, that this is a president that, if you recall, when progressives came out and they were critical of the way that uh, that uh, this president, this administration was handling Wall Street, Rahm Emanuel, his right hand, the guy who actually put this guy in office and, and built all of Obama's career, this guy, Rahm Emanuel, comes out and, and basically uh, uh, calls progressives who are critical effing retards. Mm. So nothing has changed here. The only thing that's changed is Obama now is, is more evident about it. Uh, you know, the, the fact and, is... And, and yet, Pap, if it was Mitt Romney or oh, John be, McCain, Tom, you, I, there's no question, my friend. But listen, going and, and, forward, and look at what Elena Kagan just said on the Supreme Court. I, I mean, she I, just came out and called her her colleagues in this five to four decision um, uh, that, that was reported today. Uh, there's a great piece in Daily Kos. Uh, you, you may have read it. I mean, she called them fools, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look, here, th here, the truth is, you're absolutely right. I mean, look at the money and the effort that I personally put into the, to the, having, I mean, really, I did everything I could to have him elected both times. Yeah, But we're too. talking about what happens next, Tom. What happens right. in 2014? What happens in the next presidency? So how do we push this guy in a way that we're not, you know, cutting I, his knees I, out from under? I, I don't think you can. Because if you really to understand the if to understand the foundations of plutocracy and plutocracy is an easy thing there's nothing sure. tenfold had about it. it is that money rules and wealth rules in the United States and we have him uh, we have him siding with all of that you, you, he's, he's siding with the idea that. Uh, in, in everything, the, the decisions he's making, he's siding with the idea that since 1973, 80% of the wealth has gone to 2% of the population, 65%, uh, uh, Tom, 65% of the wealth has gone to the top 1%. Right. You've had a GDP changing to where it's rising 110%, and the average worker is, is, is having their salary only rising at about 20%. 
So <clears throat> the reason I say these numbers are important is because this is what this president is adopting, you see. Mm. He is so close to Wall Street. He surrounded himself with the Rubin crowd, Robert Rubin, the Paulson crowd, uh, you know, Summers, Geithner. He, he plays golf with Jamie Dimon, for God's sakes. That's not a good message, Tom. That, to me, the message is the plutocracy, the way they operate is uh, on day and one. And yet that plutocracy has been hand-delivered to us by the Supreme Court. You, you and I both know that. Well, to we, some we know. I would argue, Pap, that we no longer have a democratic republic, a constitutionally limited democratic republic. We have a constitutional monarchy. There are nine men and women, two blocks from me, who, have, who declared in 1803 that they had the right to strike down laws made by Congress and signed by the president. And ever since that decision, that Marbury versus Madison decision, right. and Jefferson went nuts. I mean, well you're put. an attorney. You know about this. Well put. Jefferson went absolutely nuts. He said, if this, if this decision stands, then the Constitution has become a thing of wax in the hands of an unelected judiciary. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he was right. He was right, Tom. And and so and 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 these guys, you know, for the last hundred years or so, they've been saying corporations are people and money is speech, and they're getting more and more blatant but about it. It and doesn't we, all fall on them. And here's what I mean by that. Listen, listen you had. Um, uh, let, let's take take a look at the Levin Committee. Well, this yeah. is how plutocracy works. The Levin Committee that takes a look at the Lon uh, they they take a look at the London Whale story. Okay, yeah. where the crime at its worst at the worst element of crime. The Levin Committee looks at that and ignores what happens. This president has looked at what's happening on Wall Street and ignored it because that's where the money is. He's no different from Bill Clinton. We were hoping to see a little bit better for from Bill Clinton, but but he's no different. You know, just as just as the shift of power with Clinton moved from NAFTA and CAFTA and you name it, uh, the power of plutocracy took over. We were hoping maybe this president would understand that democracy does not work within a plutocracy. But I just, I mean, I'd love to put it in a different way. But if I were speaking face to face with him right now, you talk about the Supreme Court. Even look at this, Tom. The, the appointments that he's making to the courts, the federal courts, the Supreme Court, we'd want to think, oh, good, he's doing something for progressives. No. On social issues, we're hearing these, court, these courts come out, and yeah, they're going to be good on social issues, these new court appointments, but look what they're doing to corporate, for corporate America. That's where the stories aren't being told. That's where you see the plutocracy at work. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, we, just, we all have to stay as awake and aware and... and and not let it wear us down, Pat, you know? Yeah, <laughs> we, I agree. We, 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 we can't, we've got to stay, we got to stay on this. Mike Papantonio, ringoffireradio.com. Thanks a lot for being with us, Pat. Thank you, Tom. I'll be right back.